Evening folks, how are we getting on? Uh, trust you're all well, staying safe and healthy and looking after yourself. Uh, yeah, things are all going not too bad for us. Um, I, have to, I have to say the news these days isn't great, doesn't fill you with great hope. And uh, the old cost of living... But one, th one thing that has come down in price, short cross. Okay, this is short cross, or short cross gin, uh, Radom and Estate uh, fame. This is their new release, rye and, and malt. So it's 50% um, malted rye, 50% malted barley. Now, I was, down, I was down for the launch of this and I have to say they have a hell of a setup down there. The grounds down there are, well, they're beautiful. The still house is beautiful. They now have four functioning stills of various sizes. Pot still, hybrid still, tiny little experimental still that they get you fiddle about with. Now, David and Fiona, who are short cross, uh, both of them are distillers in their own right. And they have, uh, David is an engineer by trade, okay, he's an engineer by trade, and you can kind of tell that there's pipes running from this still to that, and levers here, and all over the place, and uh, you can kind of get that, you could probably guess without being told that he was an engineer. Um, Fiona is a, a distiller in her own right, and... And it's nice. David makes a point of telling people this because he does a lot of the public front stuff. They're both a little shy, honestly. I've never seen them out and about. Um, so they, they both... Fiona tends to stay away from the, 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 the sort of interviewee type stuff. So David does the public face. And he kind of seen as that. But he always pays credit to his wife and says, you know, she does every bit as much and more than I do. A really nice couple. The estate they're in is, is, is beautiful. I mean, Game of Thrones was filmed there. There's lots of history to it and so on and so forth. So well worth, and they're open now again for tours after after the, the COVID hiatus. So they're open again for tours. So if you are happen to be down that direction, yeah, stop in, pay them a visit. I don't think you have to pre-book it, but check that out on the website. Now, I say this has come down. The cost of living has come down. Shortcross released their initial bottling and it came out at £300 a bottle and lots of people were livid. Oh, how dare they? How dare they? The truth of the matter is it's an inaugural bottle and it's probably historic. It's the first new Irish or Northern Irish whiskey in, in God, it'll go long since, well, since uh, Cumber. Uh, to be released in its own right, um, which, which is historic. Now, if it had been sold at sixty pounds, it'd have hit the auction sites and end up at three hundred. The problem is, the flippers aren't buying it, um, and lots of people aren't buying it. Nobody's going to really buy it to drink it. It's one of those ones people buy to hang on to, which is a bit of a shame because I've tasted it and the quality of it's superb. This is a slightly different animal. This is going to be a standard release going forward. And I think it's going to retail about £60, if memory serves. It's about £60, £70, in and around that, for a very well-crafted spirit. Now, see, I've tried it. So I've tried a few. I've tried this a few times in various guises out of the miniature, and I tried it while I was down there, and this kind of stuff. So, so it pours out. Now, the one best new make spirit at the Irish Whiskey Awards, and... I can't over emphasize this enough. It's very, very well crafted. Now their background is in is in gin. Um that's that's what they're probably best known for at the minute. But they're moving on, they're bringing out new spirits. And this is the first. Now the first thing I notice is it's quite botanical. It's quite ginny. And I don't mean that it's juniper berries, it's it's that fragrant floral essence that gin has so on the nose it's quite bubble gummy there are little citrus hints in it too 
on the nose, it doesn't nose like a whiskey necessarily. Um, it noses a bit more like a, 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 a gin. But you can tell you can tell the quality's there already. Um, it's got it's kind of got that effect to it. You know, there's, it's got quality nosing. There isn't sort of off notes to it. There's no um, sort of bitterness coming up out of it. It's just really quite pleasant. Little elements of wood there too. Wood bark. Fresh wood bark. You know when you strip them off, there's little fresh wood bark, bubble gum, little bits of little bits of uh, nut, and touch of citrus. You know the nut and the the, the wood bark is kind of the same thing. Yeah, no, for tasty. Quite oily. Bags of nuts. Um, yeah, it, it's almost it's almost nutty butter popcorn. Um, yeah, it's not botanical on the on the palate. Certainly not on the finish. It just kind of noses that bit fresher than you, than you would think. Malted rye is different than rye. When you get rye in small quantities and it's not malted, it gives a spicy kick. Canadian Canadian rye is probably what a lot of people would be familiar with. And kind of that spicy kick. A lot of people don't particularly like it, but. This, because it's malted, balances out quite well. And it's got different layers of flavour. Um, it finishes really well for uh, a, a whisky that is so young. Now, you don't get a huge amount of information on the label. Um, so you don't. This carefully crafted rye and malt edition of Short Cross Irish Whisky has been proudly distilled, matured and bottled at Radham Estate. Created with a unique mash bill of 100% malted Irish malted rye and malted barley, double distilled in our copper pot stills, including one of the smallest whisky stills on the island of Ireland, aged in a combination of virgin chinkapin oak and ex bourbon barrels, non chill filtered, all natural colour, bottled at 46% ABV. Now, you're not getting a huge amount of the bourbon, if I'm honest. It's not those typical vanilla notes. In fact, it makes a refreshing change. I mean, obviously most people know that bourbon gives you those vanilla notes all the way through, and sweetens and all that, but this doesn't have an awful lot of that. It's got a nice a nice little spice to it, but it's very subdued. Um, it's kind of like if you, if you put a little bit of, you know, uh, not fresh ground pepper, into an in a uh, like a soup, it adds a little bit of something, but it's not it's not overpowering. It's just there in the background. There's a lot. It's kind of like that. The spice. I'm not saying it's peppery, but it's it's got that sort of background spice to it that almost disappears. You you know, plenty of people wouldn't necessarily pick up on it. It's just something I sort of feel myself. Again, it's so funny that that floral nose. It's like. I mean, it's, it's daffodil time of the year around here, and it's kind of got that daffodilly nose to it. As I say, it's it, it's fresh and you know little bits of citrus and little bits of wood and stuff there, but on on the palate, it's totally different. It's very 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 drinkable, very drinkable. Now, I like this kind of attention to detail. On the cork, you have the old short cross, and you have to go on tour for daily to tell you what that is, or daily who ever's taking the tour, I should say. And then they have short cross done on the cork. That's cool. That that is really cool. I I just, well, I think that's a really really nice touch when you're taking off that and you see that. I think that's that's sharp. Um, 
label, not overly struck with the label, it's a bit, a bit plain to be honest. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's alright, but it's a little bit plain. Um, bottle's very nice. Price wise, as I say, these days sort of 60, 70 quid a bottle is what you're going to be expecting to pay. Um, done in, in, was it small batches, is it? Do, 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 do. Where did I see it? I saw something. Yeah, it says bottle number 22001. It's not in the first bottle, I know that. Because um, I know someone else has got one of them open as well. No, so, and it says the same in there. But no, um, not done in huge quantities. One thing I will say, I'll, I'll not free um, anything if you're going on the tour, but they cask slightly differently. Most places cask at 63.5%. It's kind of the, the industry standard. Um, because that's what people, blenders and stuff say is, is the optimal thing. David and Fiona have decided to do it higher. It's in and around 69 to 70. And the reason for that is they say that that extra ABV if it has more interaction with the wood. I don't know. Um, I, I'll take their word for it if that's what they're getting. Uh, they know an awful lot more about whiskey than I ever will. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's all these little quirky little different things that uh, make 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 things a little bit more interesting and, and really differentiate between what's essentially a, a very simple process. You know, make a beer, boil it. That's basically how you get your spirit. Stick it in an oak cask for a couple of years. There you go, job done. But it's all the little differences that make these huge different variation in flavours and taste. So yeah, uh, do I have to mark this? Um, I, th I think this this is very drinkable. It's very good. It's very well crafted. Um, it's a really nice place. And again, you you go down there and you'll be welcome with open arms. They are they're really really nice people. So. It, in terms of taste, it's different. I do like it. Um, I am, I, I'm going to I'm going to struggle a little bit. The little bit that I'll struggle with in this is what people are going to do with this. Sitting having it as a sipper, perfectly acceptable and reasonable thing. Cocktails, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's not something that I do myself, but um, this would probably take a. Bit, a bit of work from one of those mixologists um yeah who, who probably could do wonders with this but um i'm not sure and I, at that point i kind of think it's it's a little bit hard just to see where this will fit in in the market going forward they'll, they'll create their own market yes it's totally it is that it's different but is it different enough in terms of pulling power we'll wait and see i hope so i hope so but that note the nose and it's very i always like it when the nose and the palate and the finish all differ um because you go on a journey um i remember a, a, a pierce lions a few years ago started off it was like green apples and by the time you finished it was like dark coffee it was just it was superb i loved it loved it and this 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 is similar but it's not the same it has yeah now again there's there's a little element at the, at the back and the finish that, that sort of goes in and out of chocolate and like a really really deep chocolate but it moves it's got a nice interplay and that interaction with with your palate, so it, yeah, it comes across on a, on a number of different levels. Because of that, because I really like the people, and because I like the, the where they what they've done, um, and the backstory and all of that kind of stuff, which is every bit as important as everything else uh, in a whiskey. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a good solid eight. Uh, possibly could go a little bit higher. A push. If I had a couple more of them, I probably would rate it a little bit higher. But eight out of ten is. Definitely, definitely one to pick up and have a whirl with because you will enjoy it. Um, the, ba the base spirit is superb. 
um, they've taken a bit of time and care with it, so they've ended up with a really good product. Uh, yeah. As I say, there's just a little little bit of reservation with me with it, and I'm not a hundred percent sure why, but there just is. Okay, so I'll give it a good strong eight out of ten. As I say, if you tried maybe a bit little bit later on, I'll give it another half mark. But yeah, well worth checking out. And uh, if you happen to be down that direction, pay it to stop them and and pay them a visit. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. So without further ado, guys and girls, I shall see you again, hopefully very soon. Take care.